If you stopped playing Fallout 76 because the world felt dead and empty, I don't blame you. After a rocky start and two pretty middling expansions, there hasn't really been a compelling reason to return to West Virginia. But Wastelanders is something different, and it just might make you want to play again. Here's why. Right off the bat, the game's main quests see some big changes with the new characters. You'll encounter a pair of titular Wastelanders as soon as you exit Vault 76. So instead of just moving from landmark to landmark and reading logs from Vault 76's overseer along the way, other NPCs may offer information about tracking her down. In fact, the overseer herself is actually a key part of Wastelander's own story quest. And guess what? You'll meet her in person. Seeing her face to face even makes the original game's main quest more meaningful, as you can finally speak to her in the present, not just listen to her audio logs from the past. In fact, the game overall finally feels alive in Wastelanders, thanks to a more lived-in world. The first quest you'll likely pick up starts at a bar called The Wayward, owned by Duchess and frequented by some of her cronies. No spoilers here, but there are some fun twists along the way as you help her hunt down a hidden treasure. As you work to pinpoint the stash, you'll be sent over hills and into mining tunnels, where you'll encounter other characters in the middle of their own adventures. Knowing that others are out there doing things when you're not around makes the world feel so much more alive. It's not just quest NPCs you'll stumble upon either. I found a fresh dead body outside of a tent surrounded by wolves. Seeing a skeleton would have told me that something happened here long ago, whereas seeing a recently deceased NPC meant the danger was still nearby. This environmental storytelling is strengthened knowing things are actually happening without your vault dweller's involvement. Going back to the Wayward, what's interesting about this location is that it's an instance, another key addition in Wastelanders. You can think of them almost like safe houses. When you're inside, the interior is unique to you. Only you and your teammates can enter, and only the team leader will gain progress from the active quest. Certain characters may come in and out of the building, and objects in the environment may change as checkpoints are reached. This also means you won't enter an instance and find it totally stripped of resources and ammo because some other schmuck got there before you. The Wayward is also where I encountered another major change, dialogue trees. It's nice to actually talk to somebody in Fallout 76, you know? Probably worth looking into if you think you could use a little refresher. Like previous Fallout games, your special stats come into play during dialogue with characters. Dialogue skill checks were sorely missed in Fallout 76, but now you can actually use your strength score to intimidate someone, persuade them with your high charisma, or squeeze them for some extra caps after running an errand. This is much more engaging than having a robot order you around or listening to holotapes of dead Brotherhood of Steel soldiers you'll never meet. You'll spend a lot of time talking with the new factions. Two rival groups have formed cities in Wastelanders, the Settlers in Foundation and the Raiders in the Crater. These new hub locations are filled with people you can actually talk to, people like traders and bartenders and quest givers. You'll also encounter smaller groups like the aggressive Blood Eagles and the crazed Cult of the Mothman out in the wild, but there's no parlaying with those people. They're your enemies no matter what. But when it comes to raiders and settlers, the new reputation system gives you a reason to make friends and help each encampment. Until you complete an initial quest for each group and get on their good side, you'll be untrusted and unable to actually do business in town, like buying supplies. Reputation can be increased by completing faction quests, as well as various daily and repeatable side missions. The raiders, for instance, always have some former members to track down and deal with. These activities ensure you'll be able to make peace with the raiders and settlers, which is key since at some point the main quest will force you to side with one or the other. Offering that type of choice wasn't possible before NPCs were added to the game. Getting in good with the factions can also win you allies, and I don't just mean you'll make friends with them. Wastelanders has key characters that can actually stay at your personal camp. These characters provide quests, and yes, they are romanceable too. Altogether, these additions make the wasteland of Fallout 76 feel much more alive. I didn't care for the original release much, and despite the game's MMO-like nature, I felt quite alone while playing it. But Wastelanders gives me a reason to explore again, and friendly faces to meet along the way. So if the game felt dead to you too, you should jump back in to see how vibrant it is now thanks to NPCs.